Articulated giraffe males can stand 20 feet tall and weigh more than a ton. Females can stand 16 feet tall to 18 feet tall, and they use their 18 to 20 inch long tongue to strip tender leaves off the thick and thorny branches of acacia trees. On the right hand side, we have the gravy zebra, which is the largest species of zebra. Please remain seated, everybody. It's very important for your safety. The gravy zebra have stripes, very thin stripes. They go down around their body, except for their belly, and that's how you can tell them apart from other species. The ostrich can weigh as much as 330 pounds and travel at nearly 40 miles per hour, and she's also capable of delivering powerful even if kicks to her predator enemies. Off to the left-hand side between the hills, you can see our Serengeti Safari truck. That's where you can go out and feed some of the animals out on the hill. You must sign up for that early, and that is an extra charge. Laying up on the hillside, beside the Grimby Zebra, we have the Eland Antelope, which also weighs a ton. And you can see the different styles of body styles between the giraffe and the Eland, but they both weigh a ton. Well, they were saying one was taken down before. This boy weighing so much. Elands can be used to ten feet from a standing start. Oh, okay. They're all laying down. There's nothing on this side, so. By the way, the train you're riding on is a three-quarter scale replica of European locomotives used in Africa around the turn of the century. It is an actual steam engine powered by clean burning propane. Off to the left-hand side is another species of zebra we have. This is a Grant's zebra. You can tell the Grant's zebra from other species by the fact that their stripes go all the way around their belly and down around their legs. When you see a photograph of a zebra from Africa, most of the time it is this species that you'll see. Scattered around the pond, you'll see some small kind of brownish dull colored geese. Those are the Egyptian geese. In Egypt, they are considered to be sacred and they were once featured prominently in ancient Egyptian art. They have been known to be kept as domestic poultry. Please have a seat. Thank you. All right, guys, I got a lot to say about the animals coming up on the right hand side, so keep your eyes peeled. We are coming up on what we call our crash of white rhino because that's what you call a group of rhino for obvious reasons. If you look carefully among that herd, you're liable to see our newest baby. She is Winifred. She was born the first week of October, so she's about three months old. Winifred weighed 130 pounds and has gained five pounds every day since she was born due to the richness of her mother's milk. White rhinos are not actually white. They're slate gray, but they do get their name, which is thought to have been misunderstood from the word wide which is wide lips where they graze grass. These animals can weigh 6,000 pounds. Yep, there's Winnie over there laying by her mother. That would be the third rhino oh, for the yeah. front. There you go. By the way, the rhinos are part of our species survival program. We do breathe in to ensure healthy generations. White rhinos can weigh 6,000 pounds, run at speeds of 35 miles per hour, and turn quickly in tight places. And give a big wave over here to our Serengeti Safari truck. Once again, this is something that you have to sign up for early in the day. It does cost extra. 
upper left hand side, make that your right hand side. We also have a group of scimitar horned orcs. Those are those beautiful brown animals with the arc horns and the white faces. These are all females. Females are always this brownish color. Males are very dark, almost black in fact. They have the habit of putting the babies in the center of the ring and laying around with each adult facing outward. That's how they protect their young and brother. Off in the distance of left hand side, we have the fossil water bug. Those are the shaggy brown water bug over there. As their name implies, they're excellent swimmers and they often take to the water to avoid predators. Walking around the curve toward the train on the left hand side is a greater food loop. You might see more of these on the other side. They usually stand very still like statues to avoid predators' detection. Most of the time, the only thing you'll see moving on them is their ears or their head. She was the sixth white rhino born here at Bush Gardens. Off to the right hand side is the Skyride Mid Station. This is neither an exit nor an entrance to the Skyride, it's simply a turning point. You can pick the exits and entrance up to the Skyride over in the Stanleyville area of the park and also right across by the right over by Chena Hunt. In the Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Congo train station coming up that we are entering. It is the closest stop to the northern portion of Antopia for Falcon Fury, the Scorpion, the Phoenix Coast Swing, and of course the Pantopia Theater. It is also the closest stop to the Congo River Rapids, the Kuba roller coaster, as well as Jung Dollar, which is designed for our 6th and 13 year old which is also home to our endangered Malaysian Bengal tiger and orangutans. For your own safety, please remain seated until the screen comes to a complete stop. Make sure and gather all personal belongings, take small children by the hand, and exit to the left-hand side only. Station exits are located toward the front and the rear of the train at the Black Iron Gate. On behalf of the engineers, the station masters, and myself, we've enjoyed having you on board, and we hope you have a wonderful day here at Bush Gardens. For those of you remaining on board, our next stop will be Stanleyville. Hey, wait for it, sir. Don't open the gate. Hey, don't open the gate till the train stop, please. Thank you. You're not working. Don't be And coming up on the right hand side, in between the break in the bushes, you'll see the Congo River Rapids. You can try your hand at navigating more than a quarter of a mile of the white waters of the Congo River, which features treacherous twists and turns, drops and caverns. On the Congo River Rapids, you can get a little wet or completely soaked. Oh, yippee! And just beyond the Congo River Rapids, also located on the right hand side, is our Bongo antelopes. These secretive creatures have once thought to have become this extinct but were rediscovered in a remote area of Kenya. Please keep your hands inside the train. Some of these bushes do contain thorns. You'll notice these beautiful animals have reddish fur and white stripes. The reddish fur is from the dark red oil secreted by them, and during storms it can often often be seen hovering beneath them. On the left hand side, we have the largest expansion ever undertaken by Bush Gardens. This is Jungala. Jungala is our tweener location geared toward folks who are 6 to 13 years of age. It's also home to our endangered Malaysian and Bengal tigers as well as orangutans. It features climbing rope dredges, jungle fires, and the wild surge.
Smokehouse. It's one of the best places to eat at Bush Gardens. It has wonderful tender beef brisket, smoked chicken and salmon, and also mouth-watering barbecue ribs. You can find the Smokehouse located to the left of the splash zone of the sheep run just across from the train station. Ladies and gentlemen, we are entering Stanleyville. This is the closest stop to the Sheep Road Roller Coaster, the Stanley Falls Log Flume Ride, the entrance and exit to the Sky Ride, also Walkabout Way where you can see our wallabies and kangaroos as well as Sesame Place for the little ones and Lori Landing. For your own safety, please remain seated until the train comes to a complete stop. Be sure and gather all personal belongings, take small children by the hand, and wash your head and step as you exit to the left-hand side only. Station exits are located toward the front and rear of the train and the wooden gates. On behalf of the engineers, the station masters, and myself, we've enjoyed having you here on board the Serengeti Express. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day here at Bush Gardens. For those of you remaining on board, our next stop will be the Nairobi train station. Once again, folks, please wait until I give you the all clear before attempting to exit the train. Wait for it, wait for it. All right, there you go. Everybody have a great day. As we depart from Stanleyville, we are surrounded by the Sheepra roller coaster. The Sheepra was the first dive roller coaster built in North America back in 2005. In 2007, it was converted to become the first floorless dive roller coaster. The Sheepra carries you up to 205 feet in the air and plunges you straight down at a 90 degree angle at more than 70 miles per hour. And of course, if one plunge isn't enough, we have a second one at 138 feet that travels through a tunnel and a splashdown finale that is sure to so call the bystanders. Coming up on the left-hand side of the train, you'll soon see the Stanley Falls Log Boom Ride. This is the longest and fastest log boom ride in the southeastern United States that carries you up to 43 feet. And coming up on the right-hand side is the most bejeweled and colorful area of the park, and this is Pantopia, which was influenced by five different African cultures. In the center of that large tower ride that you see is going to be Falcon's Fury. Falcon's Fury carries you up to 335 feet. People are pointing you straight toward the earth and plunging you down at more than 60 miles per hour. We have the Scorpion, which is right off to our right hand side of the Pantopian here. Be sure and check the back of your map for show times to check out the high kicks and chaos that our rescue animals cause here at the park. It is also home to the games area and of course the Dragon Fire Grill. Or am 
controlled cattle. In Africa, these animals are considered to be sacred. This happens to be a female whose horns only reach four and a half to five feet. Males can reach up to six, six and a half feet. In Africa, the more of these beautiful cows you own, the wealthier you are considered to be. They are almost never used for meat production despite their size. They are considered to be a milk cow. You can see our, our white rhinos. This is a two-year-old and her mother. White rhinos, like many of the animals here at Bush Gardens, belong to the Species Survival Program. They're genetically matched to ensure future healthy generations. That is our two-year-old baby, and she was the sixth white rhino born here at Bush Gardens. We also have some gray animals with long black faces. Those are white bearded wildebeest or new. They're babies can keep up with the herd within seven minutes of birth. They travel in such vast herds, numbering in the millions, that they actually kick up enough dust during migrational seasons to be observed by the International Space Station. And of course, we've got the world's largest living bird, the ostrich. She stands about eight foot tall. She can weigh 330 pounds. They can run at 40 miles per hour and just have kicks powerful enough to take down an adult lion when threatened. We also have our black rhino over to the left-hand side. Black rhinos, like white rhinos, are only slate gray in color. However, they do tend to pick up the coloration of the dirt and mud in which they roll. Sometimes our black rhino blends in with the rocks and dirt in his enclosure because he often rolls there. Black rhinos are smaller than white rhinos. They have a prehensile lip, which they use much like a finger to pluck tender leaves off the thorny branches on which they browse. White rhinos, by the way, are strictly grazers. And the white antelope that some of you may have seen off to the left with the tan saddle, those are the rarest antelope in the world called the Adox antelope, with fewer than 2,000 in captivity and fewer than, sadly, 200 in the wild. Keep your eyes open. Look to these bushes to the left-hand side and you're liable to see the Nyala. Nyala are a reddish-brown antelope with white stripes. You'll notice we have a lot of baby Nyala. That's because these animals, unlike other species of antelope, tend to have twins. A male Nyala looks nothing like all these females. He's actually dark, shaggy gray and has horns. Coming up on the right hand side as we round the curve is our Asian elephant display. You will have to exit the train to see these animals. Also, the Animal Care Center, which is the hospital that you see in our show, Wildlife Docs, featured on ABC every Saturday morning. That is where we provide care for not only our rescues, but the animals located here in the zoo. Across from the Nairobi train station, we'll see the Serengeti outpost. If you want to take one of these Serengeti safari trucks here, you need to go over there and sign up. It does cost extra, but you do get to feed some of the animals and even a much closer view. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Nairobi train station. It is the closest stop to the Kumba. I'm sorry. Make that the Montu, the Cobra's Curse, and to the Hunt roller coasters. Also, the Moroccan Palace. Check the back of your map for showtime. And the Moroccan Village, which is the entrance and exit of the park. Folks, for your own safety, please remain seated until this train comes to a complete stop. Be sure and gather all personal belongings, take small children by the hand, and exit to the right hand side of the station. Next, we're located on the front and the rear of the train at the black gates. On behalf of the Sears, Mrs. and myself, we've enjoyed having you on board, and we hope you have a wonderful day here at Bush Gardens. Wait for it, please. Wait for it. Wait. Wait. Oh, right. yeah. There you go, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great day now. Have a back.